What's on guys, we're back with a brand new video and in today's video we're going to be going into the AFL Redraft Series again and this time the 2007 AFL Draft but before we get into that draft make sure to drop a like on this video let's try to hit 30 likes on this video and subscribe because we're nearing 350 subscribers and I'm on the road to 400 subscribers so if you're new watching this video, what are you doing? Subscribe for daily AFL videos at 4 p.m. every single day. So if you like daily AFL videos, subscribe. So this draft has a lot of great, great players that even didn't make the top 10. It's a very underrated draft I see compared to when I see great AFL drafts. Um, they didn't have the, they had some really, really good talent in this draft. It's a very, very great draft. Even some uh, like role players and players that never turned to stars that are still playing in the AFL today that haven't even made the top 10. So without further ado, let's dive straight into the top 10. At number 10, I've gone with Callan Ward. Uh, now I get criticized for how that I said Callum Ward because I that's seriously I thought that's what his name was until now. So thanks for upgrading updating on updating me on that because if no one ever told me that I would be calling him Callum Ward for the rest of his career. But we, 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 and let's just get into his career. So he was a he has been one of the uh, best and fairest once at GWS, was nominated once for an All Australian, and that's about what he's done in his career. Uh, he's a very very consistent AFL player, playing 224 games so far over his career. He's currently 30 years old and has barely played footy over the past two years, which has really um, put him super low on this list. It is pretty much the, that his career's kind of gone into an injury prone route, which isn't too great. Even though the player I'm about to mention after this, it was a very injury prone player. But I feel like what they got, what they got out of this man was really consistent footy. And when he's at his best, he can play at a very, very high level. But I feel like he was never really a superstar. And I don't see him really going into anything like that. Like he was a, a great player. Some people called him a star at some stages. But I feel like he was very, very good, but, no, but not star level over his career. And I don't see him going into that category uh, for the rest of his career. At number nine, I've gone with Matthew Cruiser. Uh, he was originally pick one in this draft, and this is one that I might get criticized for putting him in the top 10, but I feel like Eddie, him at his best was probably one of the best Ruckman in the AFL. I don't know how he didn't get the 2017 All-Australian. I think everyone thought that he was clearly probably the best Ruckman that year. I know Pat, Paddy Ryder ended up getting it. I think he was a standalone Ruckman, but I reckon Matthew Cruiser in 2017 was absolutely elite. And that's why I put him over Callan Ward, just simply because I feel like this man at his best uh, was a lot better than what Callan Ward was at his best. Uh, so he was only an All-Australian once. He never won a Best and Ferris Award, uh, which is really surprising. But this man is probably one of the biggest what-ifs, because he still managed to play 189 games, even though he was one of the most injury-prone pl players uh, of pretty much all time. I saw him every game he played almost got injured. Uh, which is really sad to see, but he's a really big what if, and I feel like him at his best was so, so good. At number eight, I do have Easton Wood. Now, he was originally pick 43 in the 2007 draft, and has been one of the great leaders uh, for coming pretty late in this draft. He didn't play too many games to start off his career, but he really hit the ground running in that 2015 season, winning the Bulldogs' best and fairest, and getting the All-Australian in 2015. And in 2016, when Bob Murphy went down with the injury, actually ended up taking over captaincy for the re for the rest of the finals. Where he ended up captaining the side in that 2016 Premiership win, which is so great. Like His leadership was so great over his career. I ended up giving up the captaincy at the end of 2019, uh, which is pretty fair because they're trying to start a new leader. This man is 31 now. Uh, and they're giving it to the next star, Marcus Bonton Pally. So that's why I have eight with eight Christian Wood. At number seven, I do have Tex Walker. He was originally picked 75, which ended up being an absolute steal. Because Tex Walker is now the leading goal kicker for Adelaide Crows history, which is really, really good for getting a pick from pick 75. Now, I'm pretty sure he was an academy player for Adelaide, so that's why he did end up going so far down, which explains a lot. Uh, but during his career, he was never an All-Australian, but he was nominated three times in 2012, 2015, 2017. And was also a leading goal kicker for Adelaide in 2011, 2012, and 2019. And ended up captaining the side over the 
best days probably to be an Adelaide Crows fan in recent years, which was 2015 to 2018. Uh, he was the captain for the football club. Uh, was the main target up forward when Crows almost won the flag in 2017. And was just an absolute great leader, great goal kicker. And now is now the leading goal kicker in Adelaide history. At number 6, I do have Jack Stephen, who was originally picked 42 in the draft. He got drafted into one of the best St. Kilda teams all, of all time that did not win the flag. So he barely played football for the first few years. Really first got his chance in 2011, where he did get his first Rising Star nominee. Like four years after, uh, he actually like came into the AFL. And since then, he was just an absolute star midfielder. Had the breakaway speed, was St. Kilda's probably best player over the 2010s, uh, capturing four best and fairest for St Kilda in 2013, 2015, 2016 and 2018. Somehow was never an All-Australian simply because that the teams that he was in had really no team success over his career at the Saints, uh, being nominated in 2013 and 2016 for the All-Australian. And that's pretty much his career in a whole. Sadly, his career really did get debungled even though he did play 192 games, simply because all the off-field dramas, he was, uh, in 2011 was when he got caught, I'm not quite sure what it was, but with like him and Reece Stanley got caught on a, a trip away with St Kilda, and then obviously we know when he got traded away from the Saints in 2019, uh, he, that, uh, like when that stabbing happened in the off, like the off-season, I think pretty sure the pre-season of when he first arrived to the Cats, which really de-bungled his career and forced him to retire, uh, in the part like a couple of months ago, which is really sad to see because he was one of the best players that I ever saw play for St Gilda. At number five, I do have Harry Taylor, who was originally pick 17 inside this draft. He was a two time All Australian fullback, uh, all over to go with his two premierships. He was involved in the 2009 and 2011 premierships and was one of the most consistent defenders for Geelong uh, over the past. 15 years, I'm pretty sure he was in the AFL. He, he currently retired this year at 34, uh, playing 280 games. Uh, at the start of his career, he was trying to find his spot in the AFL, getting drafted as a, as a forward, uh, not finding his way there, but as soon as he switched to the back, he became one of the best defenders in the competition. And at number four, I do one of the best defenders of the modern era, which is Alex France. He was originally pick 18, and anything holding him back from being in my top three is the fact that his career didn't go for like too long. He did retire early at the age of 20, at the age of 29, which was really sad to see because he was still in the prime of his career. Obviously, he got his ACL at the start of 2019, which re was really sad to see. Uh, but during his career, the time he did have in the AFL, he was still so so great, uh, being a four-time All Australian and captaining the All Australian squad in 2017, oh sorry, two, he was a five-time All-Australian, my bad, uh, and also captured a uh, Best and Ferris Award in the, the 2015 season, and was in the 2017 Premiership side, it was so sad to see him miss out in 2019 and 2020, uh, but I don't think he'll mind, he got his, all his, he got his uh, Premiership, and that's pretty much all he would want, uh, didn't want to get too greedy. And number three, we do have one of the best small forwards in the AFL probably history, which is Cyril Rioli. Now, he's originally pick 12 and pretty much came in and made a huge impact straight off the bat. Uh, he was involved in all four of Hawthorne's uh, premierships and also won the 2015 Norm Smith medal. To go along with that, some individual stuff. He was also uh, All-Australian three times in his career in 2012, 15 and 16. Uh, got nominated for the AFL Rising Star, won the 2009 Goal of the Year, and he got nominated and won the Best Young Player Award in the 2009 season, and was an absolute superstar, the human highlight reel, one of my favourite players to watch, but sadly, like Alex Rance, he did retire early, uh, pretty sure he retired at the end of 2018 is when he officially announced it, I could be wrong there. I kind of got my years mixed up, but it was somewhere around there, which is really sad to see, seeing two great players like Alex Dranson who will retire so early when they still had so much more football left ahead in their careers. At number two, we do have Trent Cochin. Now, in this draft, he actually was originally picked two, and in his career, he won the controversial 2012 Brownlow medal, 
uh, was a best and fairest winner for 2011, 12 and 14. Was an All-Australian in 2012, his only years being an All-Australian. Also got AFL Player of the Year in the 2012 season. And it's also, to go, like, that's that's all great that he got all this, like, individual stuff. But the main, main thing he'll probably care about is being the captain of three premiership sides. And who knows, he could be captaining the fourth one. Uh, he's been one of the, the great leaders of the modern era, even though he gets criticised heavily for some stuff he does on the field. But all his teammates respect him, like, highly. Does everything he can for his football club. And leads his team to three premierships and possible four. Who knows what will happen in 2021. And number one, no real surprises here. We have the original pick 10, Patrick Dangerfield. Now this man is a premiership away from being one of the greatest AFL players probably ever. Uh, he's won a, the Brownlow medal in 2016. He's won four best and fairest and he's also been an eight time All-Australian. Now he was originally drafted to Adelaide, but in 2015 he did make the move to Geelong and since then just Prince broke his career getting in the Victorian eye spotlight, uh, going to the big time club in Geelong. And this year could be the year he finally wins his premiership. That's pretty much the only thing he, his goal is right now. He said that a number of times in 2020. And he definitely has the team to do it, and it'll be a really, really big loss on his record if he does not get a premiership this year, because he's almost assembled a super team with players like Jeremy Cameron and Tom Hawkins, and I, I, I'll be here all day if I name all the players. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in Paddy Dangerfield, but there's no doubt he was the 2007, he should have been the 2007 number one pick, because he's just absolute superstar, everyone knows this. So thanks for watching guys, make sure to drop a like on this video, let's try to get to 30 likes and we're nearing in on the coveted 350 subscribers and then we're on the road to 400 subscribers so make sure to drop a subscribe, turn on notifications for daily AFL videos and thanks for watching guys.